the second presentation that is about influence of immersive virtual reality on cognitive and affective learning goals. The presenter is Gianica Finken from the University of Applied Science in Karlsruhe, Germany. I just move the speaker on stage and the previous speaker. Okay, okay thank you very much. You can, you can share your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'll share my screen. Okay. Um, I hope you can see my screen now. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, yeah, hi, my name is Janneke. I'm from the uh, Hochschule Karlsruhe, University of Applied Sciences. And together with my supervisor, Professor Dr. Matthias Wölfel, we conducted a quantitative study to influence of immersive virtual reality on cognitive and effective learning goals. And since virtual reality is becoming more and more present in the educational context, we need to understand what impact this technology has on the learning process. Some of you probably think that VR can create interest and motivate to learn. And others of you are more likely to think that immersive media disrupts learning. And since this is where opinions differ, we conducted a quantitative study. The goal was to find out how VR influences learning not only cognitive learning, which is probably the first thing that comes to mind, but also effective learning, basically the learning of empathy. Before I go into our results and findings, I would like to give a very brief overview of learning in VR, especially regarding learning empathy. In doing so, the relevance of our study becomes clear. I will then explain our test setup before I introduce the two re-applications re we used in our study. And this is followed by our results and finally a conclusion. First, we look very briefly at what VR is useful for in the context of learning. So already in the 19th, the influence of immersive media on the learning process was investigated. Since then, several studies have found that VR is particularly useful for learning cognitive, psychomotor, and effective skills. Psychomotor, our procedural practical knowledge, implies the internalization of procedures. This is especially used in areas of engineering, safety, natural science, and medical fields. For example, we can all imagine um, that it's better to learn how to operate in virtual reality before performing it uh, on a real human being. And then there is uh, declarative knowledge, that which includes teaching factual knowledge, such as theoretical concepts and scientific principles, especially in astronomy, geography, biology, and chemistry. Um, an example is, for example, um, yeah, it's more appealing for children to fly through our solar system in a virtual spaceship instead of seeing it on paper or 2D screen. And the third field is analysis and problem solving. It is about improving analytical skills and finding solutions. This is especially used in engineering, physics, medicine, and geography. For example, a reapplication was even helpful um, in analyzing the coronavirus. And the last and for us most relevant field is effective learning. This includes reinduced growth and change in emotions and attitudes. However, little evidence has been found about the influence of VR on empathy-related skills. So, um, yeah, that's why we want to answer the question what empathy actually is and what findings have been found in studies so far. Um, according to Bloom's learning goal taxonomy, empathy is learned in several steps. First, we observe and recognize how actions are evaluated by others. And then we also begin to assign values to actions and act according to our values. Finally, we integrate these values into our personality, which changes our character. However, many studies that examine behavior change through virtual reality do not take into account these developmental stages of empathy. They intend behavior change by motivating better learning habits or improved compliance with rules. For example, students learn to sort trash properly by picking, picking up in a virtual world and sorting in, into trash cans. We teach them how to sort the trash properly, but now uh, not why they should do it. We, on the other hand, wanted to investigate um, how to achieve sustainable success by appealing the people's empathy and electing behavior change based on that empathy. 
there are already a few studies that ha have investigated the effect of virtual reality on prosocial behavior. For example, the VR film Clouds Over Sidra, which was able to increase empathy towards refugees through its immersive immersion in a refugee camp. So the um, viewer of the film was able to see uh, the life of a girl in a refugee camp. This film was made for the United Nations Organization and compared to a 2D film, the VR experience was better able to inspire and motivate people to take action. In another study, embodying a superhero in the virtual world was found result, uh, to result in a stronger desire to help than as a first made addict. In this world, um, half of the participants were um, embodying superheroes and the other half uh, first aid medic and the virtual superheroes did not even show um, or were not uh, more inclined to help only in the virtual world, but also later in the real world. And a third study was even able to evoke a stronger connection to nature by embodying animals in VR with multimodal sensory input. So in summary, we can conclude that the influence of VR on effective learning goals has hardly been investigated. Nevertheless, the results seem promising. However, some questions remain. So can we, the newly gained values be integrated into the character and are these values acted upon in a sustainable way? <clears throat> Therefore, based on these compelling results of previous studies that I just explained, um, we intend to investigate the influence of VR on effective learning. We have two different four key. First, we investigated the learning of empathy with the support of VR. And second, we investigated the influence of VR on the learning process. The first topic deals with the influence of VR on effective learning goals and on sustainable integration of these new values as well as on changed behavior. And the second one describes how immersive virtual reality applications affect the learning of information that is thematically complementary and supportive. So what is different in our studies that we did not learn in virtual reality, but outside of it, and we investigated the influence of VR on that content. To understand how we intend to achieve these goals, I first describe our test setup. We conducted a between group design. We had one group that was presented only with a PowerPoint presentation about the rainforest and another group that was immersed in two matching VR experience in addition to the PowerPoint presentation. And this allowed us to explore difference between 2D content and immersive VR applications. So, but the participants in the groups were not evenly split. There were 124 participants in total. And of these were 63% in the VR group and 37% in the presentation group. To determine a change in awareness of environmental threats and also the um, commitment to environmental responsibility, a questionnaire was completed at three different time points, as you can see in the slides. The first questionnaire was completed before the presentation or for the VR group before the presentation and the VR experience. And after the experience and or the presentation, the second questionnaire was answered. And when we later, there was a third questionnaire. Um, the questionnaire one week later also involved a quiz afterwards to check recall of information from the presentation. So to speak, the questionnaires were for the first focus, learning empathy, and the quiz was for the second focus, the impact of VR on learning. Not only the difference between the presentation group and the R group was important, but also the direct influence of the VR application. We also wanted to identify the influence of VR on knowledge acquired before an immersive experience or after. And for this purpose, the information was divided into two parts for the VR group and swapped for half of the participants in the VR group. Um, just briefly on demographics, I would like to add that most of the participants were students and few were employees. Also, the majority was male and only 36% were female. So now for the interesting part, the two V applications used in our study. Um, first, I want to mention that due 
due to the increasing importance and rising debate on nature conversation, we decided to choose the rainforest as the pivotal point for our study. For this purpose, we chose two exciting reapplications in addition to the presentation about the rainforest. Um, they are inside to Mukumake and Tree. Maybe some of you even I don't know, tried them before, heard of them, but what they are about becomes clearer in the following videos. I'll just briefly describe the VR experiences using video clips. And um, yeah, that's how I'd like to give you a short and for the presentation time appropriate insight. So in Inside to Mukumaki, you get a glimpse of the largest rainforest reserve in northeastern Brussels. And um, what you can see is the area where they are hiding five different animals. And through gaze directed steering, you can um, change the animals or um, see the world um, of the application through the eyes of these animals. I picked three of these just to show you how it works. The first animal I chose is a happy. It's a very large bird of, that feeds on monkeys and sloths. And what is actually really um, cool with the application is that you also always get some information about the animals. And yeah, right now we're just switching into the animal's view. As you can see, everything is moving very slowly. And that's because the birds perceive the environment much faster than we humans do. And yeah, that's just how they try to visualize their view for us humans. Also quite interesting are vampire bats. They perceive the environment via ultrasound. So how it's visualized for us is as reflected flashes of light. And there's a poison dart frog, for example, who perceives its environment through heat and cold. Therefore, as you can see, the vision was displayed for us like a thermal imaging camera, which just looks really cool and colorful. <laughs> so now we are in the second V application. It's called Tree. And there you first grow as a seed from the dark earth. And when you finally reach the light, you see the ground in the rainforest with all its plants and small animals and mushrooms, which is just really nice because when you're in the experience, you take a different angle and it's just nice to see it from a different perspective. But then you grow relatively quickly and grow taller. And the process, you can observe various rainforest animals, for example, parrots, and sometimes they land in your arms. Uh, your branches, which are actually your arms, and the rest of your body is the trunk. Um, yeah, you can see some monkeys, for example, and yeah, a parrot again, a sloth. And then when you're fully grown, it becomes night. However, you cannot admire the night sky for very long, which actually looks, looks really beautiful when you can see it in 3D. Um, but as you can see, a fire breaks out, it represents slash and burn. And while all the other plants around you burn, you also slowly catch fire. As we will see in a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. And then when the tree dies, you kind of leave it like a soul leaving a dying tree. Yeah, which is really kind of touching when you're in the experience. But yeah, now after we have learned what we are can be helpful for in the area of healing, learning and how we ourselves have designed our study based on these previous findings and looked at the reapplications, we now look at the results that we have obtained during our study. <clears throat> As mentioned before, we have two different foci. First, the learning of empathy with the support of virtual reality, and second, the influence of virtual reality on the learning process. First things first, the learning of empathy with virtual reality, we have divided into awareness of environmental threats and the commitment to environmental responsibility. We also studied the impact of cyber sickness on effective learning through virtual reality because um, this might have some effects on learning in general. And we also found some interesting results about the difference between men and women. Mm. 
So first, to the awareness of environmental threats. In this table, we see the mean scores across all responses to five-point Likert scale questions concerning awareness of environmental threats. So one means low awareness, awareness and five high awareness of threats. Um, namely, these are the values at the three different time points in uh, the times described. So it was before virtual reality and our presentation after that and a week later. Also, as previously explained, uh, VR refers to the group with the VAR experience and PT refers to the group with only presentation. And as you can see, the mean scores did not differ much because the awareness was already very high from the beginning. So what we did um, is we used a filter. You can see it in the second first column, which I highlighted. And in this case, participants with initially higher awareness were excluded. This way, we can see a change for the people for whom we really want to uh, see a change in awareness of environmental threats. We can now see that the awareness among the VR group increases significantly more than for the PT group after the presentation and hardly decreases even after one week. Mm. To test for a significant difference between the groups, we also conducted a non-parametric repeated meshes ANOVA. In the table, it can be seen that the VR group shows significantly stronger awareness both after the presentation and one week later than before the VR experiences with the presentation. And this is also the case for the described filter. Again, um, it can be seen in the segment first column. In the PT group, the participants with initially lower awareness have barely improved in this area during the study. So we can conclude that the awareness of environmental threats can be better addressed by a VR experience than by a PowerPoint presentation, at least when the experience is complementary to the presentation. For commitment to environmental responsibility, we likewise had a five-point Likert scale and uh, filtered the results. We found that the commitment improved for both groups, especially in the case of the filter with initial mean values below 4.5. In fact, ANOVA shows that commitment to environmental responsibility is significantly different from the initial value for both groups after the re-experience and our presentation, as well as one week later. However, in this case, the difference is slightly more significant for the presentation group. But we also intended to investigate what influence an immersive experience has on behavior. So we asked what actions were taken in the week following the experience, um, where we found that the VR group took slightly more action on conservation than the group with only the presentation. So I can conclude that a significant increase in commitment to environmental responsibility takes place for both groups after virtuality or the presentation. Um, this increase does not decrease significantly even after one week, so both procedures leave a lasting impact on commitment to environmental responsibility. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll just go through this a little bit quicker. Um, what we also examined in the study is the effect of cyber sickness. Um, where we found that the mean scores of the participants with cyber sickness experience are even higher than those for the participants without cyber sickness, which was kind of surprising. But um, then uh, man written EU significance test shows that the difference between the two groups are not significant. And um, also the difference between the measured time points was not significant as well. So um, based on these results, we can say that um, the HMT induced symptoms, cyber sickness does not have a negative effect on the learning of effective skills. And what was interesting between men and women was that women have a higher awareness of environmental threats and commitment to environmental responsibility, which can also be seen in the men written EU significance test. But when we look at the two right columns, we see that the um, increase after or um, a week later was not really significant. So we can conclude that although women have a stronger environmental awareness and are also more engaged in this area, um, a PowerPoint presentation is not, um, does not influence them more than a VR experience or the other way around. 
Then our second objective was, as mentioned, the influence of VR on the learning process, where we were not able to not only able to compare the VR with the presentation group, but also we had um, the presentation part, which was switched for the virtual reality group, where what which enabled us to find out if the virtual reality has an impact on information that is delivered before this experience or after it. So this graph shows how much of the quiz was answered correctly after one week, once for all the questions and then for part A and part B, which was only served for the virtual reality group. First, let's look at the impact uh, VR has on knowledge acquired from uh, apart from VR experience, um, namely the presentation. For the difference between the VR and the PT group, only the total number is interesting, which I highlighted in the graph. Um, and it can be seen that the presentation group achieved better results than the VR group. The VR group answered 69% correctly on average and the PT group only 70, uh, more because 77% uh, answered correctly. Therefore, we can conclude that the information is better remembered solely on a PowerPoint presentation instead of the combination of a PowerPoint in conjunction with an immersive VR experience in covering the same topic. And um, then we're also able to investigate the influence of VR experience on the information received before or after, as described for the VR group. The information parts were swapped for half of these participants. For this, uh, we uh, have to look at the highlighted parts in the middle of the graph. This pro um, <clears throat> there we can see that both groups achieved better results for part B, which is probably because this part contained more single multiple choice questions, which is easier to answer than three, three questions. Uh, thus, both groups scored better for part B, which was presented before the VR experience for half of the participants, and for the other half of the participants in the VR group, it was presented after the experience. So we can conclude that VR does not have an effect on information presented before or after this immersive experience. So now we um, have almost reached the end, and I would just like to give a short conclusion. Um, yeah. First, I want to mention that emotional work empathy represents significant new territory in the field of VR learning, which is somewhat surprising given a well-known interplay between learning and emotion. And supporting this, our results show that immersive VR experiences in combination with additional information delivered via PowerPoint presentation positively affect environmental awareness, not only in the short term, but also in the long term um, compared to a presentation alone. But no significant difference was found between the two groups in terms of environmental engagement. Um, but the VR group took more environmental conscious action than the PT group in the week following the experience. And contrast to positive, uh, to positive impact of VR on effective learning, we found that cognitive learning was negatively influenced as participants without the supplementary VR experience were better able to remember their represented information. Um, yeah, when interpreting the results, it should be considered that the majority of the participants are students who are known to be more sensitive to environmental issues than other groups. Therefore, participants were very environmentally aware and showed a high level of engagement, which made it difficult to show additional gains. And another limitation of our study is that we were unable to measure long-term effects because we are only able to survey participants again one week after conducting the initial study. And to better generalize the results, future studies should examine the effects of VR experience on empathetic capacity towards nature in a broader range of populations and investigate the change in behavior um, yeah, uh, over several months. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, and then I'll just end with a little citation from Chris Milk, who also worked on the interactive video Clouds over Citra. And he said, I think virtual reality has the potential to actually change the world. Through it, we become more empathetic and we become more connected. Ultimately, we become more human. 
And personally, I believe that an immersive medium like virtual reality can not only help in learning psychomotor or cognitive skills, but also in achieving becoming more human. And I think that's something we also need to teach not only children, but sometimes also adults. And yeah, thanks a lot for listening. And yeah, you can ask some questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Janneke. Uh, I ask uh, people if uh, uh, someone has some question. I see interesting presentation. <laughs> uh, it is uh, not a question <laughs> at all. Uh, how much do you think the novelty of the VR technologies uh, interfere with the experiments in terms of the students getting impressed and distracted by these very new technologies when applied to education? Um, I don't think that um, it really interferes that much because our results were not, um, so for the second focus, they were not um, as significant as for the empathy part. So, yeah, but I don't know. I think there are a lot of different factors that come into play and there still needs to be some research done because yeah, there's still um, some studies saying that it yeah, disrupts the learning process because it's an even immersive or even more immersive medium. And yeah. Uh, there's another question. Could, could it have a side effect in the data collected in terms of bias? Um, can you repeat the question? Or what, what kind of side effects do you mean? Uh, I, I, I'm just reading. <laughs> Could it have a side effect in the data collected in terms of bias? Or maybe I can I can put also Santi on stage so he can ask directly. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. I can read the question. I'm, I'm reading the question. <laughs> Santi, you are on stage, you can... Uh... Uh, okay, I can... I can speak now, yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, actually the question come from the previous one. Uh, where these, you know, very spectacular uh, new technologies could somehow um, impress the, the participants uh, in the experiments and they get distracted or something so that the, the data that you collect is not... Um, actually uh, real in terms of that uh, they uh, they pay more attention to the technology itself than the, than the experiments. Uh, I don't know if I, <laughs> I, I am clear with that. Did you understand the question? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think um, especially because virtual reality is a new medium for a lot yes. of people, well, they might pay more attention to it. And yeah, it could definitely have an effect on the data collected. Um, but yeah, I also found a study um, which also compared virtual reality and PowerPoint presentations. And what they found is that after repeating, so they learned in virtual reality, not out of it. And when they, um, then repeated what um, they learned in virtual reality, they actually um, achieved better results than the group than that only um, had the PowerPoint. Um, so I think that, yeah, maybe virtual reality can have as well positive as negative effects, but, and we still need to add some like 2D content, but yeah, if we compare it, we, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Enough. Thank you very much. <laughs>